See, I know stupid. We are back with the giveaway K24. Follow the link below for more information. Anyway, the block is back from the machine shop. They bore and honed it for us, and they balanced the crank, and they hot tanked it, cleaned up a couple things. So the first thing I want to talk about is what the machine shop did. They bore and honed this block for us. What is, what is bore and hone, right? All right, so the machine shop bored our engine out. So what that means is we original piston for this engine was 89 millimeters. We had bought pistons that are 10 thousandths over, which is 0.5 millimeters larger. So in order to fit the larger piston, the machine shop had to make the cylinders a little bit bigger. So why did we go with a bigger, bigger piston? Because after this motor had some mileage on it, and after some time, these cylinder walls start to distort. So they, they become, they, they get out of round. And shoving a new piston in there, sometimes you'll scrape the sides and you don't want to do that. So you want to start fresh with a perfect uh, cylinder wall. And this way, you know, your, your piston, the wall clearance is perfect. It's always a good idea, even when you're rebuilding, just go one size larger, 10 thousandths or, you know, half a millimeter larger. Have your, have your machine shop, just bore it out. This way you're starting fresh and there's no guessing if the cylinder walls are oval or they got a little bit of taper to them. You know you're good, bring it to the machine shop. Another thing they did for us was they honed it. Honing is, if you could see these little hatch marks in there, they should like form little X's. How, why is that important? When you go and put your, your piston in and you have your piston rings in there, you want a little bit of a harsh surface like this so the piston ring has something to grab against. If this was super smooth, the piston ring won't have anything to grab against and then you'll just leak a whole bunch of compression out. The other thing that the machine shop did for us was balance the rotating assembly. What that consists of is the crankshaft, the harmonic balancer, they even balanced the, um, the cog for the oil pump and the cog for the, the crank pickup. So let me show you that. You could see the old holes here. What that is, is that's the factory way they balance it. It's the same way they balance tires. They spin it on a machine and then they figure out which side is off balance. But unlike a tire or, you know, you cannot add weight. So they take away weight. That's, those are the factory holes, which are good. This is a really good crank. They come fairly well balanced. But if you're doing anything high performance, you're gonna spin them up a little faster. Ours is probably gonna go up somewhere close to about 10 grand. If you can see there, that's where he took away a little bit more weight. See, he ground that out, ground a little bit there. And I think there was another space where, I think that, yeah, right there. See that right there? How that worked was it goes into a machine and he leaves these gears on because these gears need to be balanced also. And then- What are those gears called? One of them is the oil pump and the other one is the timing chain that hooks up to the cams. Also, when you balance, it's always a good idea to balance with the harmonic balancer and a clutch and flywheel. In this case, we didn't do the clutch and flywheel because we're not 100% sure what clutch and flywheel setup we're gonna go with. Something else that, that's interesting, right? Everyone talks about bore and stroke on an engine. I already explained what bore is. So what is stroke? It is that time of year again, the SEMA crunch, it's coming. And if you're used to following us as we go into SEMA time, you know what to expect. A whole lot of this. And that, some more of this. Oh. Because for the past two years, we've brought some complete insanity to the SEMA show, and it's been a ton of fun. But 2020 is complete mayhem, and conventions aren't really happening the way we're used to it. So SEMA decided to go 100% virtual, and they launched a new platform called SEMA 360. 
At SEMA 360 is a 100% online experience of SEMA. So if you're a qualified media, a buyer, a seller, or in the industry, you get access to pretty much what SEMA originally was. So you'll get all the goodness that SEMA has always been. So you get to see new product, see new vehicles, interact with the companies, talk with their sales staff, and learn about all the products. Beyond that, there's the Builder Showcase with over 200 cars, most of which you haven't seen yet. And because there hasn't been a lot of car shows this year, there's bound to be some really sick stuff that comes out of the woodwork. You still get your whole experience. It's just a little bit different. But I think that this is gonna be really rad, so make sure to sign up, go check it out, be a part of this. Let's get through this crazy year together. Stroke is how much the piston moves up and down inside that cylinder, that stroke. And that's determined from the center line of this to the center line of here, and then your rod length and all the other stuff. When I get this in the, into the block, I'll show you exactly what stroke is. I'm loosening up the, uh, the main girdle. Okay, this is called it a girdle. It is basically a whole webbing system that has the main caps that hold the crank in. The crank sits into here, main cap sits here. So you hear people say, I got a four bolt main. Well, basically what they're doing is counting the bolts here. Imagine these were the, the main caps just by itself. They would be two bolts here, and then usually it's like two bolts at a diagonal that way, or sometimes two bolts going this way. Why they do that, why it's important to have like four bolt main rather than a two bolt main or have a girdle is because everything moves, everything deflects. If you have just the girdle by itself, it has a tendency to move. So therefore, you know, one of the ways to combat that was to put more bolts in it. So it has less movement. The better option is this, this is called a girdle. So basically the main caps are built into this webbing system here and it uses the outside of the engine block as a support. It has less deflection than just a cap by itself. Take this off. Now we got the girdle off. One of the most important things about building an engine is make sure everything's clean. They hot tanked it for us, so all the gunk on the outside is pretty much gone, but there's still some, like you see, like a little bit of debris here and there. So we're gonna blow that out, some brake cleaner in here, blow out the oil galleys and have at it. Yeah, this is just compressed air. That's why I took out the plug out here, so it has somewhere to go. See? See that? Yeah, you don't want that. One of the reasons why it's important to clean everything is oil has to travel through passages inside this engine. And the only thing that's holding your crank from hitting your bearing is a small, small, thin film of oil and that comes throughout these holes here. You're gonna see in the bearing there's gonna be a hole. So the oil comes out of there, it provides a cushion between the crank and the bearing, but what happens is if there's old debris or old like gunk in here, it's gonna come out, it's gonna, and then you're gonna have little chunks that build up on top of your, your bearing. And then you're gonna scar the bearing, you're gonna scar the crank, you don't want that. Shoot a bunch of brake cleaner in there, let it sit for a little bit, blow it out with some air. I took out this plug because that's the main oil line that goes through here. See the filter? So the main oil feed goes through here, goes into these holes, rides into the bearings. These, I'm gonna explain a little bit once I get to them. I'll show you what these are. These are squirters. Ooh, squirter. <laughs> Time to put in some bearings. So you remember before I told you like, you could see the holes in the bearing. So how this works is oil comes out of here, fills that groove and then pushes itself through these two holes. And then it creates a thin layer in here. And that's what holds up your crank. The bearings have a little tab on them. And it just coordinates with that. All right, that's one half.
just like that. It's a good idea to do that. Spread it with your fingers. See how sticky this stuff is? So the first startup, just before oil pressure, this stuff stays in there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop the crank in. Gently place it down, don't drop it. Thrust bearings. So what this does is, as of now, there's, we only have cushion on the bearings that go up and down, right? The purpose of thrust bearings is to keep the crank from going this way and this way. This so the it. easiest way I found is shake it and just rotate it in the crank. That's it. Same thing, it's got the tab, but this one doesn't have the hold because the oil is from here, not here. See, there's no hole, no groove. Put some juice on it like we did the other one. See how I quickly rotate, and you see that line in there? Can you see that line of oil? Yeah. That's what happens with, with motor oil, you see? Everything nice and lubed. We gotta put the rear main seal on right here okay and then we have to glue up the girdle and stick it down it's always a good idea to replace the rear main seal because if that starts to leak transmission's got to come out flywheel's got to come out it'll be a bad day so we got these bolts right the main bolts we got new ones. Our guys over at kseriesparts.com gave us a all new hardware and all the OEM parts we got from them. I learned this from an old dude, older than me. I brushed a little bit of, of oil right there, just a little guy like that. Because when you go to torque them, you don't want the added pressure of the bolts binding up. So a little bit of oil right there, not a whole bunch, just a little bit. A little dab will do you. There's a, there's a certain way to do this. First, you torque it down to 22 pounds. Now we got the torque wrench set. So it's got a degree right there, you see? So once it hits 264 inch pounds, it's gonna go into degrees. You see that? The top number is 55 degrees, you see? We first torqued it down to 22 foot-pounds, and then we rotated the bolt 55 degrees. That's just another way of them doing torque. Some people say it's more accurate. Is it? I don't know, but that's what the factory spec is, 22 pounds, and then 55 degrees of rotation. And now I gotta tighten these little guys here. This is a different type of torque wrench, the old-fashioned type. So all you gotta do is just screw this up and down and you select where you wanna go. Right now we're at 16 pounds right there. I personally like these better. I like the feeling of them. The positive clicks, no boops and bops. Crank is in, girdle's in. Give it a quick little turn. It's not hung up, it spins really nice. You're probably like, why is he building that on the table, right? Because it has the girdle, I can only grab it out of two bolts. So now with the girdle back on, I can put it on the engine stand because it's got the third bolt. See, I know stupid. To finish off what boring stroke is, I'm gonna show you what stroke is. I'm gonna use an old piston. I put some tape around it so we don't scuff up our walls. It's just gonna be a visual of what stroke is. So now you can see how much movement there is in a piston. It, that still has blue tape on it. And look how much movement it is. You don't think half a millimeter is a lot, but it's a lot. So we know bore is the size of the hole. Hone is the finish that they leave inside the cylinder walls. So to show you what stroke is, I installed an old piston. Stroke is the measurement from top dead center, which the piston is at now, to bottom dead center. Right now, it's top dead center. 
we take it to bottom dead center. Bottom dead center would be a piston all the way down in the cylinder hole. See that? This is bottom dead center. The lowest point of your stroke. This is top dead center, the highest point of your stroke. So that concludes bore and stroke. Next, we're gonna talk about pistons and rods, compression ratio, why a K24 is called K24. Don't forget, you guys are gonna win this. So all you gotta do to enter is go to Carcane Supply or Hoonigan.com. You buy something, you're entered. And if it's, even if you don't win, our friends over at Gear Ranch are throwing in some tools for second, third, and fourth place. So, good luck.